by way of introducing Belvin, um, he's a star former running back for the 49ers and the Miami Dolphins, two of the top teams in all football. He set several important records, several of which remain unbroken. Early on, Delvin excelled as an athlete. He was a high school All-American, first team. He got a scholarship to University of Kansas, which he describes as the Harvard of the Midwest. Um, and in 1974, he was drafted by the 49ers on the second round. He was extremely successful as a professional football player. He set four 49ers records, um, including the single, you know, single rushing, season rushing yards with 1,200 yards, 34 carries in a game, etc. He was then traded to the Miami Dolphins. Um, working with Don Shula, a very famous coach, uh, where he set their single season rushing record with 1,258 yards. That record stood for 25 years. He was the first player in NFL history to rush for 1,000 yards for two different teams. And after retiring, Delvin dove into the areas of youth activities, sports and drug abuse prevention, um, he did an organization called Pros for Kids, where he would bring professional players and have them engage directly with young at-risk children, oftentimes in the ghetto. And he used really his celebrity status to get, you know, the, you know, programs at the White House. He had like the first lady show up at some of his dinners, which had great fundraising effects, etc. He's also been very, very active in helping other athletes once they retire. In that, that's evidently a truly shocking experience. Um, for example, he's a three, which is all about accomplishment and doing. Can you imagine a three who, you know, like in his 30s, had their career and their accomplishments from that direction all of a sudden ended? It really brings him an interesting complexity to the picture. Um, as far as some of these other organizations which Delvin has founded, they include the National Sports Career Management and the Associations of Sports and Athlete Professionals. Delvin, where did you grow up? Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. A lot of people say Texas, Houston's not in the South, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I went to, uh, um, I grew up in a, I went to an all-black high school um, in, um, in the South in, in the early 60s and 70s. Um, I got a scholarship to the University of Kansas, um, was academically ineligible as a freshman, had to work and pay my way through school, and I uh, graduated in four years. But how was it, mm -hmm. what was it like in Houston in your early childhood? Oh, it was it was uh, uh, it was difficult. I started smoking cigarettes and drinking about ten years old. My one of my earliest failures is I flunked the fourth grade with all F's, and uh, that was kind of devastating. Uh, I thought I was. I, I found out later that I'm, I'm in '96 that I'm dyslexic and I have ADHD, so I didn't know that then. And and uh, severe sleep apnea. I've had six surgeries for sleep apnea. Uh, so a lot of that I didn't know till I was left Houston and went to school. What were, in addition to let's say failing in fourth grade, what were some of your early life experiences and failures? Well, I want to just kind of give a little bit of a history to how being a three for me. Please. Uh, uh, um, and and I can go back to kindergarten and really see my, understand how I, where the threeness started to, to, to form in my life. And I think it may have started even earlier, but I lived with my grandparents. My mother was 16 when I was born and she was still at home with parents. And so she was doing what 16 year olds do. And so my grandparents kind of raised me and, uh, uh, and, and my grandfather was uh, the patriarch of the family. So my first day of kindergarten, my mother came over to, to take me to school I didn't want to go. Got there, I'm crying all the way, and uh, 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 and and she sat in the little chair next to me. <laughs> if I bring you a hamburger back, will you stop crying? Yep. Well, she didn't come back. 
maybe she did and I, I just was impatient, but I asked the instructor if I could be excused and she said yes and I walked home. And, 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 and in the South at that time, you know, corporal punishment was, was discipline then. And, and so my grandfather saw me walk in the house and said, what are you doing here? Why are you not at school? Blah, 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 blah. Get your butt in here. Boom, 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 boom. And he says, tomorrow you're going to school with the neighbors and don't you come back home and blah, blah, blah. So I walked outside and I'm still kind of crying, but he, had, he did what he thought was right, but he had no knowledge, you know, he, could, he didn't know that I missed my mother. So the message I got was you don't feel, you do. And from that point on is how I, it's achievement, accomplishment, doing, doing, doing. And that shaped my uh, uh, desire to be loved. That's how in, in, on a spiritual level, it's love that we seek is where our damage is, no matter what your point is. And so my way of seeking love is through by performing and doing things to show you that I can do this. And I remember several occasions of my, my brother that was a year younger than me, he made all A's and he'd get the music appreciation awards. And when I would go over on the weekend, she said, because see, my grandmother would let me stay home if I didn't want to go to school. Uh, cause I didn't like going to school cause it wasn't fun. But when I go with my mother, she says, if you don't take your butt to school, you see this, Wayne's making the A's and B's, and she says, you're not going to amount to anything. Else. And to myself, I said, I'll show you. And so everything is this to show, I'll prove it. And, uh, uh, and that's how we gain love as threes. And so our, we don't feel, you know, we learn at a very early age to shut down feelings and let me perform, let me do this, and I know I, I, I'll be loved. And with that backdrop, that's what, that's the development, and we all come to our development by those markers at an early age in our life. And it's more of a spiritual piece that to seek, the, I've tried to, to get to a point where I know every aspect, I, I can feel every aspect when I'm stressed, I go to nine. I, I just, I get, you know, I'm doing this and I'll go do this and I'll start here and I'll leave this here and then I'll, I don't want to think about anything. And then when I'm nonchalant, I go to six. Doubting, questioning, wondering what the motives are, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and a lot of that is beneficial, you know. I mean, I know in the, in the, in the uh, uh, springtime, in the wintertime here, I go to four a lot because I like the dark, you know, it's home, it's raining, you know, and I like being at home with wood in the fireplace. And so you, I know a lot of times I'm in two because I'm always helpful. So a lot of these things that we've talked about today, they have broad ramifications in your life. If you pursue this, you'll find every aspect of it show up in every part of your life. It'll, it'll never leave you. So gentlemen, you know, at the times when the performing, the succeeding didn't work out, and the mm -hmm. future is when you were younger, a child, mm -hmm. you may have not had this, you know, started the career, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what was that like for you? Because you didn't, that, that's mm -hmm. the way you, you said, like you described, you got love and acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. What was that like when you, when you didn't perform? You well, well, it was frustrating when I didn't know what was wrong in school. You know, I mean, I, 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 you, you, you're trying to find a lot of different ways. You don't want to go to school. You know, it's starting to shape, you know. But I can, I can, if the kids would laugh at me, I, said, I knew I could beat them up <laughs> if they laughed. But that wasn't something I'd do. But that wasn't, that was my only recourse. But then the instructor would send me outside. It, back then it was, uh, uh, today it's time out. You know, but I look forward to going outside because I didn't have to read. And, uh, uh, and so you find always these ways to get around things, but then when, when you get all else, that doesn't work anymore. You gotta find, so you hit rock bottom, you gotta figure out. And as a, and as a dyslexic, a three dyslexic, I just start to learn by observation and learning by what people did and, and, and trying to mimic and learn those behaviors and those patterns. And so, and that became my way of learning. You know, it's through experientially and, and auditory. When I went to school, like college, I'd always felt uncomfortable with school, always. And then when I went to college, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And then I found out I was el ineligible. But the best thing happened to me was, was not getting a scholarship that first year. And I had to work because I proved to myself I can do it. 
And it was based on my efforts, my doing and getting it done. I knew, I, I didn't know technically, but I knew effort. You know, just staying with it. And there were mornings, I mean, I had sleep apnea, I was tired. I would go to seven o'clock classes. Assistant athletic director told me, he says, Delvin, and I, he says, I'll, I'll tell you one or two things. If you do these things, you, you have a better chance. He says, one, whatever you do, go to class. He says, if you go to class, you got 50% of it whipped. And he says, if you, you get to a point where you don't under, under, understand anything, uh, uh, let, ask the instructor, don't wait too long. Ask an instructor to help you and they'll be more than happy to. And I followed that, I followed that all the way through and before I knew it, I flunked one class in four years of school. And I almost had like a 2.5 average all. And then I knew I could do it, but it was based on doing, not who I was. It was based on getting stuff done. And, and the more I saw uh, rewards and grades, I can do this. And it wasn't about feeling. And you mentioned something mm -hmm. that we haven't pointed out as kind of like the, the, the negative side of mm -hmm. this performing and doing, mm -hmm. right? You said exhaustion at some point. Well, it's exhaustion, and in, in, in you, you don't, uh, 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 you almost want something to happen to lay you down because you want on your own. You just keep doing it, you just keep going, you just keep going. Oh, maybe if I get a cold, oh, I can rest. You know, until, until you, you learn to look at every aspect of your life that feelings, it's very important to who you are. Uh, and most of these, we don't like to be in that. It is the gate, if you will, that we all we have to go through in order to have this, this full, uh, a de fully developed person to feel, uh, to get things done. You'll never lose, as a three, you'll never lose your uh, ability to get things done. Like <laughs> Dr. Daniels told me once, he says, I said, well, do you think, you know, uh, I, I question what I'm going to become if I be more aware of my, he says, you'll never have to worry about doing things. He said, what you have to learn is not to do. Are you, mm -hmm. are you afraid of failure? Oh, yeah. Very much so. Uh, very early on, I thought that was a motivator is not to fail, you know, because failure to me was dramatic. It wasn't, oh, I can get over this, you know, oh, I mean, I got all F's. <laughs> you know, where do you start from, you know? But for threes, threes will recouch it. We'll reframe it. We don't fail. I mean, we'll, we'll although we do, but we'll make it, we'll change it. And, uh, I mean, in football, you fail, I mean, every play is designed to go is a perfect play. And, and when they're done, somebody failed. Every play, somebody is failing. And, and as Ellie said earlier, that every Monday, you have one day to enjoy victory or defeat. And you gotta put it behind you and look to the next week. And, and, and failure, uh, is, to me, is when, particularly playing football, is you're getting evaluated by 80,000 people, uh, 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 but, but what it really matters, I think you were saying this earlier, is letting my teammates down. And then when, when you walk into that film room, because we'll watch the game, we might be sitting all like this and watch the whole game, and the coach, run that back, run that back. See, Delvin, see, if you missed a block here. See, if you would have done this, <laughs> and you. But, but it also gives you the opportunity to to the, that next day to go out and practice and start working on it and changing it. And then come the next Sunday, you go out, see though, you did that right. That was the way we wanted it. What drew me to football was something that, you know, it, it was this primal instinct. You know, the family, belonging, I was single parent family, you know, I was living with my grandparents. I live in a tough neighborhood, but nobody messed with football players. You know, and then they were, we were united as a group. Nobody would mess with you because you'd have to with all the guys. And so it was this primal thing that was there, the sense of belonging, the sense of family. It's a gang itself. Yeah, it, it is, in a sense, a gang. Any organizing this is somewhat of a gang, uh, 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 but, but you belong to something. That's somewhat the same theory in gangs. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and so I've had 
I'm getting ready to have both of my hips replaced. I've had 21, it'll be 21 surgeries in my lifetime. And as we talked, as you were saying earlier, uh, you don't care about the injury, is you don't want to let the team down. Some of the awakening in all of this, when you the team leaves you though later, and, and you're left alone. And that's the hard part of recovering. When you put all this in for the team, you work together, and all these people have been around you to help you get there. And then you, 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 there's, to me, I've come, I call it, you know, athletes, and most of you, have, we have bullshit detectors. And we know we've been lied to, we know that people don't have, but we still want to be a part of this because it's the family, you know, you want to succeed at it. And when they leave you, you know, because NFL has, and to, I'm going to get started on this, but stop, if the NFL has, uh, uh, the supply side is endless. They're coming out of college every year. And when they don't have any more use for you, they'll get someone else. And so as a three, not being able to do anymore and being, and, and there wasn't anything you can do about this. You're just getting old. You can't do it anymore. And you can't, and that was the biggest thing coming out of football is that in, the, in football, I could physically change the outcome of something. If I did wrong, I could go out and I could physically change the outcome. But in life, it's an inside job. And so all that ability being able to physically change an outcome wouldn't help me one inch anymore. Now I had to go inside and look at who I was as a person, which was, it wasn't all about accomplishment. Oh, I had had every accomplishment I could, I would want. I, you know, you reach the apex of it. Now what? So Kevin, going back, mm -hmm. just a quick question, and actually two related questions. One, when you were playing, when you were playing football, um, how did you, how did you recenter after losing a game or really doing last mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. And I guess a related question: How did your coaches frame failure mm -hmm. or help you bounce back? Mm -hmm. Well, that's there, there, there was well. As I say, you can go out and physically. You look at the film; it tells you what you've done wrong. You know, the, the theory is the big eye in the sky don't lie. Let's go watch the film. And and after it, and, and 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 after you watch it, you'll know if you screwed up, and you'll know what you have to do to correct it. Uh, uh, and then if it's borderline, you say, "Well, I could get better here. I can do this." You know, and I well, it's not as bad as I thought it was, and so I feel a lot better. But when you, where the, the real sense of getting better at it is the, the fact that when you have nowhere else to turn to, that you have to feel it. You know, I, I screwed up. And that's where the most growth comes, that to move beyond that when you can't control outcome of it, you have to sit with it, uh, uh, is when you get it. And that's what came to me in life after football. Because in football, I'd been so used to changing the outcome. You know, we go as a team, we walk, we'll go play a team on the back, back east, 80,000 people in there, it's just us. We're gonna go out. And we come out of there with a win, you know, or you come out of it with a loss and you look at the film and see what you did wrong. You let the team down, you know. It, uh, so it's a, it's a heavy burden uh, uh, week in, week out, and you play hurt. You know, you play, I played with broken ribs. I played a full season with, with, with broken wrist. Uh, uh, I've had uh, dislocated joints and play, you take shots. And uh, uh, you do what you have to do. And, and the thing about it, it became, and this may just always stop me because I'll go off on some things, but uh, um, it was different than my dream. My dream, I was a hero. I mean, they were picking me up on my on my on their shoulders, and I'm waking up. And I, but in football, it's not about you anymore. It's about the team. You have to learn team concepts. You have to practice. You have to do all that. You say, Shit, I just know what I dreamed of. And, and and so you start to acquiesce. What's good for you for this? whole uh, embodiment of, of and, and even though what you learn as, a, as an, an early age and when it's over, you know, you feel uh, betrayed when it's over. But, but, but it's, it's a self-betrayal because 
I believe the marketing plan. I bought into the marketing plan. Uh, and they never showed us what it was like afterwards. They just showed us what, the, what it was like when they talk about the, uh, and the image of that was just, just uh, 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 so vivid in my mind. And image, image is very important for threes, you know. Or how am I, how do I look doing this? How do I, this is where I get my, my hit from. Uh, um, and, and this is what I wanted to do. So uh, one last question, Delvin, and to mm -hmm. wrap it up, and I know you've done a lot of self-development. Mm -hmm. So what words of wisdom or advice do you have, in particular, I'd say, for the young threes, mm -hmm. specifically, how to deal with uh, failure? And also, how could they develop mm -hmm. through that? Well, <clears throat> I'm 63, some of you are in your 20s and 30s, so <laughs> my experience is take it for what it's. Um, one, y y y it's not the end of the world. You know, you, you, you look at it as a learning experience. You know, what did I, what did I get from this? What to not do again, the same one? Because doing is, is, is really what you're about as young threes. You'll get it done, but how do you start to pay attention to what you feel about getting it done? Where you're not blaming someone else and, and, and letting someone else hold you responsible for something. It's, it's more self-development, self-awareness, and observing yourself. And this is a, a very deep spiritual practice that, that we can take our, to learn about ourselves we bring into a workplace. But it's with you away from work. If you've accepted whatever point you are as a three, it will be with you the rest of your life. And you can't lie to yourself. And you'll have to look at every aspect of who you are. And where the, where the compassion comes in and observing others is when you realize the work you've had to do to get to some acceptance and understand. And then you look at someone else and say, well, I know what they're going through. They may not know, but you have more compassion because if you're doing your work, you're going you're gonna to be very, you're going to feel these things. You're going to feel these emotions, the pain. And when somebody says, no, you can't control this, or when somebody says you did wrong, doesn't mean I'm going to show you. I'm going to you feel you feel that in me. Okay, well, I got to work through this. I just cannot ab abdicate that and just move forward into the fixation. So I, I just think paying real attention to yourself, getting more information about what makes you tick, and remembering it. It is about you and nobody else. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, great.